bad news from earnings to economic data to that target takedown. We're wondering what it says about the state of stocks right now. Let's ask Brian Belsky. He is BMO Capital Markets Chief Investment Strategist. He is right here at Post 9. It's good to see you. Nice to see you. I mean, Thanks for having us. It seems weird for me to use the word resilient with, with a fragile market. But are we on to something with that? I think we are. Good news is good news. Good news is bad news. Which one is it? I think uh, when we talk to clients, Scott, I think uh, I sense that clients are getting a little bit more comfortable at these price levels. I think the market has done a great job kind of re-rating some of these higher growth stocks that kind of took out the so, uh, so-called froth. But at these levels, heading into the end of the year, we've seen a bond market rally that has obviously sent the 10-year a little bit lower. And I think more and more people confident on what the Fed's going to do the next two to three meetings. That's now behind us. Two meetings, I'll give you. Well, I mean, our, our economics department thinks they're going to go 50-50-50, uh, and then we'll see. But I don't know. I think two meetings, I think I, I'm comfortable with the next two meetings. Yeah, well, that's and what then we'll see. Because how do, where do we go from 50-50 to we'll see, to 50, 50, 50, and then we'll see. Like, well, I think, we've gone another 50. Right. I think what, th what they're looking at is their, their projections for inflation are probably a little bit higher. I, I think inflation could roll over again. Uh, but again, let's get through the summer. But I do think Jackson Hole in August is going to be a very, very pivotal time. You know why they changed it? Because they heard, they listened to our network. <laughs> they did. They heard Brainerd tell Sarah, like, I don't know what this pause thing is in September, but I'm not ready to make that call yet. And then they heard Mester with Leesman say essentially the, the same thing. So the market had to catch up to where the Fed seems to actually be. You describe yourself now as, quote, bullish with a dose of reality. I mean, that's because you caved and cut your price target recently. <laughs> that's the reality check, Belsky, right? Well, I mean, you know, listen, if you kind of looked at where we were when we made the change from 5,300 to 4,800 to have a 35 percent move in the markets, I'm just a common sense kid from Minnesota. The chances are that we were going to get that, Scott. But a 4,800 close on the market is still a brand new high. And I think we can still get there. And something that you and I have bantered about back and forth is our $245 earnings number, which we did not change. So we do think we're going to see powerful upside earnings in things like energy. We're seeing that financials, health care, parts of community communication services, which, oh, by the way, is now our, con our favorite contrarian buy now. And so I think there are, are areas to be in the market and still maintain exposure to more of the growth at a reasonable price Man, you keep saying You keep walking further out on the contrarian plank. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you, you, you cut your price target down, but it's still really aggressive. You didn't cut your earnings no. expectations down. And the you know, self-described kid from Minnesota, then you know Target as well as anybody, right? That doesn't give you pause on what's going to happen you with know, earnings? You know why? The CEO of Target is a great leader. Brian Cornell. And he makes great decisions. And it's almost like he's selling a stock, right? He invokes a stop loss and he moves forward. He did the same thing when he just became CEO when they got out of Canada. They kind of cut their losses and moved on. Now, Target's a much different kind of situation than Walmart because Walmart obviously with a bigger percentage of, of sales on the grocery side. I think Target's kind of doing the right thing coming out and talking about it. Then the market can digest the news and move forward. Right. I mean, it's like the kitchen sink sort right. of thing. I, I get it. That's great that, that they did that. OK. Cornell has a long track record, so he deserves the benefit of the doubt. He admitted on the earnings call that he got it wrong. We like that, and the market respects that. But yeah, I know, but that doesn't have anything to do with earnings. No, but on the consumer discretionary side, you know, we went from an overweight to a market weight, principally because we do think there's some multiple risk there, and especially some of the, the larger areas like Tesla and Amazon. Okay, but we do see the consumer remaining very resilient and smart. So the consumer heading into the summer and fall is, are going to continue to be smarter and smarter what they're doing with their money, whether or not it's Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't think it's going to be both. It's going to be one or the other. So you also make the argument that the, as you call it, secular bull market remains intact. So this was just all a correction? It was a correction. We've been we, in a bear market, man. But the market was acting like a bear market, man, but we never saw an official bear market well, but because I mean, we never but closed, that's like, though. But that